But men, they're not as good at verbalizing how they feel as much as women. They can do it, but it exhausts them. Women get at each other's hints more. We hint a lot. We don't even aware of how much we hint. And men are not really good at getting those hints. Um, it, it's one thing to talk. It's another thing to understand what a person's saying. It isn't enough to just understand their words. You need to understand what they mean by their intent. Welcome back to the Fascinating Woman channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I'm Cherry Lynn, and I'm here with my mom, Dixie Andalyn Forsythe. Hi. Hi. So today we are talking about how to talk to men. Why are we talking about this today? Shouldn't we just talk to everyone the same? What do you think about that? Men are very different. Um, and when we talk about talking to men, we're not just talking about potential love interests or husbands, even brothers, fathers, men at the store, just men in general, because half of the population is male. And so we need to learn how to talk to them. I Just before Bob left this morning, I was talking to him about the subject and he said, men are really simple. Yes. <laughs> they just, they're very simple, but women are, are so connected to everything that everything kind of plays a part in the conversation. So they sometimes expect more of men than they actually are or have in terms of communicating. Men are, men are simple, but they don't feel simple to us ladies. <laughs> it's simple to them. Yeah. So we're talking about five tips of how to talk to men today. There are thousands of tips out there, but these are our top five that are very general and basic for those of you that are just wanting to get an introduction, I guess, if you'll say it that way, an introduction to just learning to understand how to talk to men. The first one is, believe it or not, smiling. Smiling is real simple. We don't always think to do it. When you smile, when you're talking to somebody, especially men, but even women, it shows that you're approachable, that you are nice, that you're probably emotionally safe to communicate with. It's just a nice thing to do. It saying, I'm I'm not going to hurt you. And not that, not that men or anybody is that hypersensitive, but we all, when we don't know somebody, it really helps to put all of us at ease if the person we're talking to is smiling at us. Yeah, smiling is really important. And sending that message that you're approachable is important to everyone, but particularly men, especially if it's a man that you don't know that well, it's going to help develop that trust between the two of you. Okay, number two is be clear. What does this mean? Men love communication just like we do, but men, they're not as good at verbalizing how they feel as much as women. They can do it, but it exhausts them. For example, uh, there's an example. If you if it's you're married and you want to go somewhere, do something instead of saying, "Could we get out? Could we go do something tonight?" If you can be clear and sp specific, you can also use the word specific and clear. And I would love to go get salad, or I would love to go get soup at such and such a place. It, would you like to? Was that something you'd like to do? Then that means because men are target oriented too. That means that they can they can know where to go. And they can feel like they're, they understand. They're not going to be, you're not going to say, what? Why did you say that? You're going to know ex exactly where to go and they can succeed at it. So be, be clear. I think the big eye opening kind of aha moment for me with being clear and something I've had to learn in my life when talking to men is that being clear is very different for a woman than it is to a man. So with, with us, like when you and me are talking, we can almost sometimes finish each other's sentences or understand what each other is saying, of course, depending on how close you are with that person, because we read each other's faces and we just pick up on these small little details. Well, men don't always do that. I guess there's exceptions out there, but most men are seeking a task uh, when you're talking, especially when it comes to relationships, they're looking for tasks. What can I do to be valuable and competent? What can I work? Where, where do I fit in here? And so when you're being clear, you're subconsciously kind of in a way giving him a task, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And, and also men thrive on feeling like they're good at something instead of feeling like they messed up. It's not that women, are, women get each other's hints more. We hint a lot. We're not even aware of how much we hint. And, yeah. uh, and men are not really good at getting those hints. Some are better than others, but some really don't get hints much at all. So the more specific you can be, which is being clear, the better it is for him and for you. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you're talking to him. I've heard ladies comment on this when we've talked about it before. And they say, that sounds like you're treating him like a child. It isn't, it isn't at all similar to, to the way you speak to a child. It's just more about being, like you said, including some details and being a little bit more specific. That's it. It's really just simple. Number three is engaging while listening. This is a very rich kind of 
tip. So there's a lot of elements to it. So what does this mean, engaging while listening? It, it's one thing to talk. It's another thing to understand what a person's saying. So it isn't it isn't enough to just understand their words. You need to understand what they mean by their intent. Sometimes as women, a lot of us will take, say, well, you said this. And instead of looking at the man and thinking, what did he mean by that? If we're not quite sure and thinking what you know about him. Now, if you don't know him very well, you're going to have to ask more things, but you can you can reflect what he's saying by saying something like, when you said this, did you mean this? Or did you mean this? And it's showing that you're interested in what he's saying. So you're reflecting it back. And the other thing is, if you're not sure and you know him better, like say me with my husband, you with yours, you might think, okay, he said this, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I know him and he probably, he's what he's trying to do is be helpful. And so instead of taking taking what he says at, at just word for word face value look at what he's trying to say because remember men are not as a, as a whole group are not as good at communicating thoughts and feelings as well as we are they're just they don't they don't have as much ability to put their thoughts into words and then get them out quickly like we do and another tip that I don't know, some of you probably don't fall into this, but I sometimes do is, is to make sure you're not talking more than he is Mm -hmm. (laughs) because we are so verbal. Uh, You, in a conversation, you may find that your voice is getting dry. You need to drink a water and he does and he doesn't. So make sure that when you're, especially when you're getting to know someone, you let them talk at least as much as you. And then is there an exception to that for shy men? Yeah. And that's where you have to go to the intent. If he's re- if he seems really happy that you're taking the lead in the conversation, then keep going with it. I also think that just because you may be talking to a shy man or a man that is just a little bit more um, reserved doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that you talking needs to be all about you. It could be you talking and being interested in him. And maybe you are kind of leading the conversation, but you're still, or maybe you're not, depending on who you're talking to, whether you're talking or not, the talking is focused a little bit more, just a little bit more towards him. And his interests. Men like to talk. I mean, everyone likes to talk about themselves, I guess. But but when you're talking to a man, it's important to not just go on and on and on about you. I guess is what I'm. Okay, let's say. Take a, we don't want to stereotype too much, but let's take a man who has for his job or career, he does um, a lot of things by himself. He's maybe an introvert, maybe a mathematician or an IT guy, mm-hmm. and they and most of what they do is sitting in front of the computer, so they don't have to have to uh, physically or even on the computer talk to people. A lot of those men tend to be introverts and maybe not as good. And it doesn't mean they're always shy. They're just uncomfortable with verbalizing. So if you talk to them about what they do and act interested in what they're doing and how they enjoy it or, or, or how, how did they learn to do it? Those, those kinds of things are interesting to them and can help bring them out. So they are maybe a little bit more verbal. Right. And I always feel so bad for the men. And this is going in a non romantic kind of uh off topic for a moment, but I always feel sorry for the men that are in social events and there's crowds of women and they're kind of ignoring the men because they're not perhaps sure how to engage them in conversation. I always feel bad. They're sitting over there thinking, where do I fit into this? And this is where you can, like you said, you can ask them about their job. You can ask them about their kids. You can ask them about something that has to do with them that they feel competent in in engaging with. Just well, well, that's why I bring that up is partly because not all men who are less verbal are shy. Sometimes they're just uh, they're just more introverted or uncomfortable in that situation, not sure where they fit in, and they're just uncomfortable. So you you can help them be more comfortable by acting interested in them in a in, in a non aggressive way, you know. And yeah, and it's I think some women think, well, if I go over there and talk to him, everyone's going to think that I'm flirting with him or something. And I, I think be the woman in the room that's just friendly to him. And and I guess there's going to be situations where. The man could take it a different way, but in general, just be the woman that's that's in, including him, and and it, it'll make you feel better. It'll make him feel better. Number four is give him a task. What does this mean? Okay, this one may seem a little surprising to some of us. It's not like you're saying go clean my bathroom or something like that. Like this that is kind a motherly of, tasking. Well, this isn't mother. This isn't an order or an assignment. It's something that it may seem like a r- really small thing, but men really respond well to it is give him a task like would you mind holding my coat for a minute while I do this or would you would you mind doing that could you um what are some other ones could you uh, would you mind grab the door for me would you grab the door for me um would you save me a seat save me a seat 
Uh, those so many little things. things. And why is that important to men? Why do they want that? <laughs> they, they like to feel like they are accomplishing something. Now you might think that holding my <laughs> holding my handbag while I do this. Yes, it's it's it, and it, men need to feel competent in what they do, and this is free for us. And we can do this with all kinds of men. Would you Would you mind doing this? Would you mind doing that? Small things that are not really uh, asking a big favor, and it makes them feel gallant. It makes them feel helpful. It makes them feel successful, even in that small area. Here's a here's an example. It happened just yesterday. My sister's visiting me, and she's um she's building a new house. And she went to this this place to pick out. Her husband has passed away. She picked to pick out some flooring, and there was a man. She wasn't sure about something, so she, there was a man nearby, and she wanted help with uh, understanding about what certain kinds of flooring were. And she said to him, "You look like you know a lot about building. Would you know about this or that? Could you help me?" answer this question. And he was so glad to do it. She says, you look like you know a lot about this. Could you help me with this? Is this is this brand of flooring good? Is it better than this? And so it was just a little thing that that she did. And she has no romantic interest in this person. Right, right. And this was, And she actually did need help. She did want help. It's yeah. the way she approached him. Yes. You look like you know a lot about this. Could you, would you mind doing this? And it was nothing. It was a little um, 30 second thing. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure that that made his day just a little tiny bit. Yeah. 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 This is how to speak to men, whoever, whatever men, yeah. whether it's yeah. you know or don't know or whatever. I think too, this one also falls under if he offers. I know my husband constantly offers. Do you need anything? When he's coming home from work, I get this almost every day. Do you need anything? And I always find it interesting because he has a an almost an hour commute home. And I'm thinking to myself, why would he say, do I need anything? He's got such a long drive. Why would I give him something to do? But I have to remind myself that he wants to do something for me. It's his way of showing his love. He wants that task. He's fishing for that task. Now, I won't give him one unless I really, really do need it. But don't feel bad if your guy is asking for a task. Don't feel bad to give him one. It doesn't represent that you are weak or you can't do it. Will you hold my purse doesn't mean you can't hold it. Of course you can hold it. But would it be more convenient for you if you weren't? Why not? Make it, think about it logically. If he wants it, then give it to him. <laughs> do, you think, do you think ever when your husband asks you if there's anything you need, does he ever act a little disappointed if you don't need anything over and over? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes he does, especially if he knows that I've had a kind of crazy day. And like, you know, the other day my son came home and it was a really rough day of school and it was a lot of homework. And he knew about it because we we had been going back and forth via text. And I think you know, that night he said, do you need anything? And I think that was his way of saying, like, I, I want to support you. Most women would miss that and be like, oh, just get home already. You know, <laughs> I think a lot of women would just think, I just need you. <laughs> but but that's that's a really tiny thing that you can understand in men is that, that that was that moment. And I recognized it because I know about fascinating women. And I thought, oh, he wants he just wants to support me. And he doesn't this is his way of doing it. So no, I didn't really need anything from him that day. But if there is a day and I need something, I'll I'll just say, you know what? What would be really great is if you could stop by the store really quick and grab this for me that I don't have it. He loves it. <laughs> yeah, maybe even if it's something you plan to get tomorrow, but he wants to help you today and it means you don't have to go out tomorrow, then maybe you should let him do it. It also applies to men that aren't your husbands, it, it applies to to your brothers, like you mentioned earlier, your, bro- your dad, men that you see in social settings. I, I was at a school function a couple weeks ago, and uh, we were volunteering, and there was a man in our group. There was only one man in our group with all these women, and I noticed that he felt uncomfortable, and I asked him to hang something for me, and boy, did he just spring to his feet and, go and hang that thing for me, and I think he felt so valuable that he had something to do. He didn't know what where his place was there. And this isn't motherly. This is just recognize. This is being smart and recognizing that this is where men feel comfortable and where they feel valuable. It's actually womanly. It's not really so much. <laughs> it's yeah. womanly. Okay. okay. And then the last one is probably the most important one. This one means, this one means a lot to men. Number five is compliment his competence. Men need to feel like they're doing something well, even if just take the smallest things. Like if he says something and you can say, you're right. You're absolutely right. That's a feeling of competence or you nailed it. Or how did you do that? That's amazing. That is gives a man a feeling of competence. Now, some women notice this in men, but they just don't say anything and they don't realize how important it is for them to hear it. Even if it's just something they said, you know, when you 
said this and did this. I was thinking about it. You're absolutely right. And that gives them a feeling of feeling com- competent. You know, there are very few subjects with fascinating womanhood that kind of get under my skin. This is one of them with, when it comes to women saying, making up excuses that they can't do this. I hear this all the time. Last week, we posted a reel on Instagram about how to admire his competence and things like that. I had comments from women coming in saying, well, he isn't good at anything. And it just, it, it just shocks me that there are women out there that oh, you married this man or you, you know, this, this is someone that you love and you care about. And you're telling me that they're not good at anything. That to me just says that you are looking for the worst in him. And that is the problem with this one right here. You're, it's about looking. It's not just about saying it. It's about finding the things that he's good at and genuinely commenting on them. Well, even, even commenting when he's right. When he's right about something, he which said, is not he's a- never, I, I, I typed back to her and she said, well, he's never right. And he doesn't, he doesn't fix anything. He doesn't do any, it basically just, there's no way he doesn't do anything right. And I'm sorry. Every single human being on this earth has a talent, has good things about them. You have to find it. And if you are saying it doesn't exist, I'm sorry, but you are not looking hard enough. Well, yeah. it's not because you shouldn't have to look hard with somebody you say you love. I, it's, well, it's- you shouldn't, but. I guess the people that are in that mindset, that to me, that's my answer for them. Like you need to keep looking. Because everybody is given talents. Everyone has talents, whether they developed them fully or not, maybe something different, but they have talents that I don't have, or you don't have. The woman who wrote that doesn't consider talents or competency in anything that her husband does. He has to be competent at at whatever he does for work, or he wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to keep his job. So he has to be competent in some things. And it doesn't work to just say it. You have to see it. You can't just say, oh, I'm supposed to compliment him on his competence. So I think I'll just, yeah, you look nice today. You know, you, it needs to be real and it needs to be a something, a habit that you form. And when you're looking at, when you're talking to people, anyone, but particularly men, because they crave it so, so much, look for what they're good at. Even if it's, you picked out a tie today that is the exact same color of your eyes. It looks amazing on you. Like those little tiny things. I'm sorry. There's there's something you can compliment them on. There's something that everyone can be complimented on. And not just complimented, but on something that they do well. Right. If you have any comments down below, we would love to hear from you. What are some other things that you use, other tips that you have in talking to men, whether it's your husband, your boyfriend, your dad, your brothers, men at work. What are some tips that work for you? We would love to hear from you. And if you want to learn more about understanding men, this is just the tiniest little tiny piece of the puzzle. You need to read Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman. Her book will be attached to this video. You definitely need to grab a copy and you will learn not only how to understand men, but how to have a more long lasting and romantic relationship with the man that you love and we are here almost every week so don't forget to check back with us hit like and subscribe so that we know you're here watching with us and so that our channel can grow don't forget to connect with us on all of our social media sites which are also attached to this video we have such an active instagram account where dixie and her husband bob my dad they do a lot of scenarios for you that are really fun to watch so definitely check out our instagram page and our facebook group as well Thanks. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.